Okay, so Chao show me some moves I can use as self-defense. Okay, sure. There's a couple of principles that I want you to know. First yeah. of all, is a, a good strong stance when you're in a self-defense situation. Okay, like so this? if you know something's mm -hmm. gonna happen, uh -huh. what you wanna be shoulder width mm -hmm. and your dominant foot behind, so you have good balance and that I can't move you very easily side to side okay. or, or back to forth. Okay. You have good sense. Okay. The next thing you want to do is you want to raise your hands up high to your temple, okay? <laughs> okay. And what it does is it shields you from okay. anything that comes okay. at you. All right. So that's the first principle it's, is, okay. see right away, oh, well, I don't want to fight. I don't okay. want to fight. What, what, what do you want? What do you okay. want? Okay. But actually okay. this, this uh, position actually is a very amazing position to attack very aggressively okay. without me really understanding. So I, I, it's kind of like playing possum. Okay. I think you're, you're saying stop, stop, okay. stop, but in reality, your stance is very strong okay. and you're ready to attack me. Okay. The next principle I want you to know is you have to have a distraction before you actually do your attack. Okay. The distraction is uh, points in the human body that will uh, generate an involuntary reaction. So if I poke your eyes, mm -hmm. If I poke your throat, uh -huh. your groin, or your uh -huh. shin bone, uh -huh. strike your shin bone, you will have an involuntary reaction. Okay. You will have to react to it. Okay. It doesn't matter if you're big or small. Now we're going to teach you my favorite uh, okay. weapon, which is the elbow. It's okay. very, very devastating. And devastating. Remember, okay. Devastating. And I remember, like devastating. <laughs> <laughs> the elbow is, you have your hands up. Mm -hmm. See this beautiful thing? And yeah. all you're going to do now is put your thumb and, in a rainbow fashion here, and the elbow comes out. Ah, okay. And then so you're, like this. Yes, okay. exactly. All right. Okay, I get it. I get it. Respect. You see, your, your hip is here, yeah. so your your stance is strong. So you're gonna yeah. rotate your hips like this. Yes, okay. to get power. Into All right. It. And so what ends up happening is I'm here going, hey, I'm gonna threaten you. Yeah. So what do you do? One eye. Ah, then I'm out. And then I do this. Yes. Oh. And then and then you have to do it a few times so that I'm I'm out. Okay. You have over 30 years of experience in martial arts as a student, as a fighter, as an instructor, as a coach. Do you get into the ring these days? You know, I still train every day uh, with the world champions um, at my martial arts schools um, because I love it. You know, so these guys make me better in every way. You know, I love learning, growing, evolving as a martial artist. What's been your worst injury? Um, I've broken my foot a few times. A few times? Yeah, my right foot. I've broken my left foot, <laughs> broken my wrist, uh, my rib. But that was in, in, in professional contact. That yeah. was not in everyday training. Everyday training is very, very safe. You know, I, yeah. I, I don't get injuries. But it's only when I go into professional competition, which I used to do, then you can, you know, it's possible. Okay, you have a rags to riches story. Your family lost everything during the Asian financial crisis. Your father left shortly after. You worked your way through university, delivering Chinese food, teaching Muay Thai on the sidelines. And then you started one championship. What you went through in your personal life, has it made you more determined to succeed? Yeah, you know, um, I look back at my life and, and in many ways I, I feel so blessed and grateful that I've been able to experience poverty and wealth. And I think very So it made you hungry? No, absolutely. I mean, I'm so grateful because, you know, I grew up in a well-to-do family as a child in, growing up in Thailand. And I don't think if I had not gone through what I went through in terms of my family getting wiped out, literally penniless and homeless, and my father abandoning us, that tragedy, that, 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 you know, at that time was the worst moment in my life, that gave me fire in my belly. It gave me this, this, this hunger I've never had before. Mm -hmm. You know, when you watch your mom cry, and when you see her, you know, she's so worried for her kids' futures. And, you know, to be honest, I was worried for my future as well, my younger brother. Um, and when you see all that, and, and, and the fact that you know we were living on four dollars a day, and when you see that your mom has to live with you in the dorm room because she has nowhere else to go, and you know if Harvard found out, I would have probably been kicked out. My mom would have kicked out. So it's these extreme circumstances that something beautiful is born. I really believe it. So that's why I'm I'm so grateful for those days in poverty. I I just don't think I would be the same person. So, you know, of course I was angry with my father, uh, you know, abandoned the family. But today I look at it and I'm like, you know. In many ways, I'm glad he. I, I'm glad he did that because I would never have found myself. I would never have discovered this inner warrior that I had. Mm. So um, that's what I would say to everybody. It's like you know, good or bad, everything is a blessing. It's how you look at it and what lessons you take away from it. And so, you know, absolutely, po poverty was one of the best things that ever happened to me. How is your mom today? My mom is. Um, I would say she's proud now, you know. She was very against martial arts my whole life, even including one championship. She didn't want me to do, do martial arts. She's a traditional Japanese lady, mm. and she loved the fact that her son was a Harvard Business School MBA on Wall Street with his own fund. She loved that whole picture. But I told her, Mom, that's not me. That's not who I am. Mm. You know, I am this, this child, this kid who loves martial arts. That's how I view myself. And I, I, this is 
and that's why I can't believe that. I feel like I'm just, it's playtime every day for me. I do martial arts, that's all I do. Mm. Um, and she's proud of what you've achieved today? But yeah, no, my mom is most happy because she said, Chatri, I see how happy you are now. And all this other stuff, I think, uh, I think she's proud of it, but I think most importantly, she sees now that I'm, I'm, I'm very content as a human being. Mm -hmm. You're 46 years old. You graduated with an MBA from Harvard University. You started your own internet uh, software company in, yeah. in university, which you later sold off. Spent some years in, in the hedge fund industry, made millions of dollars, gave all that up to start mm -hmm. one championship mm -hmm. in 2011. How has martial arts shaped your leadership style? What do you like as the boss? Um, actually, that's so funny. You, ask, I, you know, I, no one's ever asked me that. How does it <laughs> shape? shape? I, you know, um, martial arts at the same time gave me um, all these amazing things about you know being a, having a warrior spirit. But at the same time, martial arts because I was an instructor, because mm. I was a teacher. As a teacher, you have to learn how to ignite passion and belief and mm. self belief and confidence. And how do you nurture that mm. and and help people? And I think that aspect of me as a leader has come out is that, you know, I look at everybody and I think to myself, what is it that they want out of life? How can I help them achieve it? So I view myself very much as a servant leader. I would also say, though, that I am a fierce leader, uh, uh, you know, because of my How martial fierce. arts. You know, I, 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 I've been known to uh, uh, be very, very fierce. You know, it, it depends on Please what it is. Please elaborate. You know, um, there are certain things that really, really tick me off. So if um, someone... Um, uh, does not exemplify our values. We have mm. six core values internally as a company and in terms of our cult company culture. Mm. It's integrity, happiness, excellence, continuous self-improvement, teamwork, and loyalty. If anyone steps out of line of those, uh, those so values. So what do you do? You throw supply, them into the ring? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm just very, I just say I'm very fierce and everyone knows I'm, I'm trained martial arts. But of course, I never do anything, but I'm just saying, <laughs> Maybe that's a, maybe that's a... Uh, Should uh, I yeah. be afraid? No, not at all, <laughs> not at all, not at all. And finally, you spent the last six years growing one championship. What is your ultimate dream for the company? You know, um, of course, I'm very proud today that, a, you know, one championship has become Asia's largest sports media property, broadcast 128 countries and all the big financial metrics and all that stuff. Of course, I'm proud of that. But you know what I'm most proud of are the moments that I realized a dream of creating heroes who have a positive impact on the world, who genuinely um, inspire and motivate people and, and, and from all walks of life. That's when I really feel like, wow, like this thing, is, this thing has really done something. So I'll give you an example. Edward Falayang, you know, our Filipino hero. Mm. He born in the poorest rungs of society. Both of his parents are illiterate. He took up martial arts as a young child to mm. escape poverty. Nine brothers and sisters, five passed away because of basic illness. They, didn't, they couldn't afford a doctor. He became the first to read and write, go to university, win a Wushu gold medal, and as a, was a tender one underdog and won the world, world championship at one championship, became an overnight national hero mm -hmm. in the Philippines. And what's most amazing is humble, kind, gentle, compassionate, honorable, and respectable. And all of these uh, kids, I look at them, and I know that, that, that he's a hero, but I know he's someone that's gonna be a good influence on, on, on society. That's when I'm like, that's why I do it. That why keeps you I do going. It. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's all the number stuff is nice, but when I look at what is it really that's fulfilling my soul, that's totally different than when I was on Wall Street. It's this. And I've been speaking with Chatri Sityotong, founder and CEO of One Championship. Hope you've enjoyed the program. Do check us online at managingasia.cnbc.com for more exclusive leadership insights. Until next time, I'm Christine Tan. Thanks for watching. Hi, I'm Christine Tan and thanks for watching Managing Asia on CNBC Live. You can check out more of our great content by clicking on the videos on screen. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for the very best in feature programming. Thanks for watching.